today we will discuss about stoke shift in the last lecture we have discussed kasha's rule and fluorescent spect spectroscopy whenever we observe emission spectra we also have a concept of origin of stoke shift there we will discuss the stoke shift in this lecture the aim of this lecture is to introduce the basics of fluorescent spectra spectroscopy and origin of stoke shift in the spectrum then the excited spectrum before going into detail first we will talk about this term stoke shift as the term is self explanatory shift means something is shifting yes in a spectrum the peaks are shifting so stoke is the first person first talk about shifting in the peaks of emission as a matter of fact the difference between position of the band maxima of absorption and emission spectra mind this the difference between position of band maxima of absorption spectra and emission spectra is called stoke shift whenever we are saying the difference the difference may be in terms of energy in terms of wave number in terms of frequency ratio but absorption will be there <coughs> and this absorption is called stoke shift fluorescence and raman are the example of the same electronic conditions and the stoke shift observed the stoke shift named after an irish physicist george gregor stokes who worked on this he designed a beautiful experiment and worked on this and concluded the observation of this stoke shift sometimes stoke shifts are given in wavelength units but this is less meaningful than energy wavelength or frequency unit because it depends on absorption wavelength for example a 50 nm stoke shift from absorption at 300 nm is larger in terms of energy than 50 nm absorption at 600 nm so it is always good to learn about stoke shift in wavelength terms we should think over why it happens when a system in our case system is either molecule or atoms when a system absorb a photon it gains energy and move to excited state one way for the system to relax to emit a photon thus losing its energy in the form of energy loss of energy as heat when the emitted photon has less energy than the absorbed the energy difference is observed once again try to learn the behavior you give the energy electron move to excited state but electrons 
if they want to go down first they try to relax they release some energy in the form of heat or some other non electric transitions we have discussed in many classes previously then release the energy and move to slightly lower state now from their state they absorb photon if the energy uh, emission is from the lower state the energy difference will be there the emitted energies will be less less energy means shifted towards higher wavelength that is called stoke shift the stoke shift is primarily the result of resulted of two phenomena vibration relaxation and then emission of fluorescence when we give the energy the energy will be absorbed as it is shown here so first the absorption occur now these and you absorb the energy is absorbed it move to high energy says now we have discussed already discussed s2 and s1 so i'm not discussing this but here we know this we are having many vibration levels now from here from higher state it dissipates some energy move to lower state that is called not this is due to non radio transitions and so the transition takes place not doesn't takes place from the higher state it takes place from the lower state and the lower state means energy is shifting now vibration relaxation this is called vibrational relaxation or dissipation or solvent reorganization so these things takes place here vibration relaxation relax in terms of vibrations or it dissipates some energy to surroundings or the solvent may reorganize a fluorophore is a dipole surrounded by solvent molecules and if fluorescence enter in excited state the dipole movement will change if the dip if it is surrounded with many molecules and dipole movement will change so a surrounding solvent molecules cannot adjust so quickly it will take some time after relaxation after vibration relaxation the dipole movement realign and that is why we observe here different color on the on the name of stoke shift we have also de defined this stokes fluorescence stoke fluorescence is the emission of longer wavelength photon or lower frequency energy photons by a molecule that has absorbed a photon of shorter wavelength or higher frequency so basically stock fluorescence is the emission of longer wavelength both absorption and radiation of energy are distinctive for particular molecular structure it is a characteristic of molecular structure so it can be used as an application to analyze the samples what sample it is and this makes the fluorescence spectroscopy very stronger if a material has a direct band gap in visible light the light shining on it is absorbed and excite electron to high energy state and finally it can give fluorescence whenever we give energy electron to high energy state now electron remain in the excited state for 10 to minus 8 second this is the relaxation time for excited state this number varies several order of magnitude depending on the sample in some sample 10 to minus 8 in some were lesser or higher and this is also known as fluorescence time of the sample after losing a small amount of energy 
through vibration relaxation the molecule return to ground state and energy is emitted this is called emission spectrum which is characteristic of material in this figure it is shown that the absorption have 10 to minus 15 second relaxed time lifetime so it moved to higher state then due to vibration relaxation the electron moved to lower states which have a time 10 to minus 10 10 to minus 12 second per second and finally move to lower state which is longer time there is a concept of anti stroke shift also if the emitted photon have more energy than the absorbed the energy difference is called anti stroke shift this extra energy comes from dissipation of thermal phonons in a lattice cooling the crystal in the process interestingly this is a very interesting concept because in this lecture till from the first slide we are discussing stroke shift and stroke shift is due to loss of energy electron get the energy electron absorb the energy move to iron state then electron lose the energy electron give the energy to the surrounding and that is why we observe a shift and higher peak peak at higher wavelength or lower energy but one more shift is possible anti stroke shift which is just reverse to our previous concept in this concept extra energy is there anti stroke shift gives you idea you are getting you are giving lower energy but you are getting higher energy how it is possible our energy principle can't give you answer can't give permit you yes but there is a possibility if you are getting peak of higher energy then this extra energy the electron is getting from dissipation of thermal phonons from the surroundings it is getting the energy then it is delivering you higher energy so higher energy if you are getting anti stroke shift then by this you can talk about thermal phonons crystal lattice behavior cooling of crystal this can be studied here is an example of yttrium oxysulfide if you dope it gadolinium oxysulfide it is a common industrial anti stroke pigment this absorb in the near infrared and emit in visible region it means it absorb higher wavelength or lower energy and give you higher energy lower wavelength the photon up conversion up conversion is an another anti stroke process an example of this later process is demonstrated by up curve up converting nano particles it is more commonly observed in raman spectroscopy where it can be used to determine temperature of the material if actually it is used as a cooling system if you are getting wavelength of lower wavelength if you are getting peak of higher energy then energy is gained by surroundings and energy gained in the form of heat so it can give you a lot of information about your system cooling material of the system behavior of temperature of the material so it is a very upcoming field photon up conversion we have many up converting nanoparticles this gives raman spectroscopy and shift anti stroke shift thank you all in this lecture we have studied stroke shift the why stroke shift is observed 
stroke shift is very important in understanding the behavior of nanoparticle behavior of nanoparticle or the other particles in excited state thank you